Brick, uh, are you just looking around the room and saying things that you love? I love lamp. That's a great movie. That I mean, it's wholly inappropriate, but no, mm, but it's funny. It's super. It's really good. good. Should we get this going? We should. Welcome to Catholic Guardians, an unapologetically. I forgot. An unapologetically masculine podcast. Where we don't forget what we're supposed to say. For Catholic men. By Catholic men. And together. I've forgotten what we're going to do. We're going to return to tradition. That's what we're doing. We're bringing it back. <laughs> I, That's so the goal. N- so now that we have, now that we're, <laughs> now that we're on YouTube, I'm going to cut in that scene from, uh, oh, what is that movie? Jack Black. He doesn't say anything the entire movie. It's that stoner idiot, his friend. Oh, uh, Orange County. No. No? There's like three of them. Where he's the stoner? Okay, I'm sorry. Asking which movie Jack Black is the stoner in is... Yeah, he doesn't say anything. He's got that long, blonde-haired idiot. They work at the fast food restaurant. Sorry. We're gonna look this up. Oh, it's not Jack Black. Who's the guy that doesn't say anything? Joe Black? Joe Dirt? Silent Bob? Silent Bob. Jane, Jane Silent, Silent Bob. Bob? Oh my gosh. Ugh. Thank you. They're both idiots. <laughs> you, see, you know what I'm seeing? I'm talking about, You're, right? you're talking about Clerks too. <laughs> I'm talking about Clerks too. <laughs> when he says, yeah, I'm taking it back. I'm bringing it back. <laughs> I'm bringing it back. Such a good movie. Wow, my gains, bro. Look at also, these things. wholly inappropriate. Holy, I know, but I don't need... All I need is just him saying that he's bringing it back. So when I say, we're bringing it back, <laughs> I'm bringing it back. I'm going to cut to him. I'm bringing it back. <laughs> and uh, everybody else be damned. Fair use. It's only a two-second clip. We'll be good. Whatever. It's not like YouTube is going to monetize us anyway. That's true. So yeah. today, what are we talking about today? We're going to be talking I'm never prepared. in depth about the uh, apparition of Our Lady of Lords. The apparitions, excuse me, because there are 18 reported apparitions. That's a lot. That is. That's a lot. And we're going to go back and forth one for one. You do one, I do one. You do one, I do one. But this is one of the other more well-known Marian apparitions. Last week, we talked about Our Lady of Guadalupe. And then in terms of heavy hitters, this one comes next chronologically. And the thing that I find that's true, yeah. yeah. The thing that I find most interesting about this one is that even though it is one of the most well known of the Marian apparitions, it technically is a private revelation. Which is why, and I wrote this down, it's not included in the article of faith. Um, but it because it's only private mm-hmm. revelation, you are not required to believe it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Although you're kind of an idiot if you don't. Kind of an idiot if you don't. Um, so it happens to a young girl yep. named Bernadette Subaru. I don't think that's how you say her name. Probably. Uh, but it's French, so it's Bernadette Surrender. Bernadette. Subra? It's like Sub. It's Subaru. Subaru? It's pretty close to the word Subaru. It's pretty close. Um. It's in between Subaru and the French word of surrender. But uh, so, yeah, young Bernadette. um, She's got 18 apparitions from the Blessed Mother. Um, A little background on Bernadette. uh, She comes from a broke family, but not not broke as in broken family, but as in very, very poor. But they weren't always. No, her father was a miller Mm -hmm. who lost his mill and then had to do odd jobs Mm -hmm. in order to support the family. Um, so they were at one time Weller offer that they've fallen on some hard times, um, a, a large family. And what they didn't have in monetary possessions, they had um, in huh, a lot of in um, faith. Yeah. So even though, and we'll get into this a little bit later, Bernadette is kind of a, a, a dud, both spiritually as far as catechesis goes and otherwise and just overall mentally very poorly educated yeah poorly educated she's not exactly like the brightest ball in the box and, yep. and and that's not saying anything poorly against her it's just a, kind of a statement yep um and part of that was um she was just sick she had asthma um 
But and, and part of that happened. She started developing some of these uh, some of these ailments after her family had to move out of their house. They moved into a single, a rent free single room home, which it's not was, a room. It used to be a jail. It used to be a jail <laughs> until the government was like, "We can't even put criminals here." <laughs> Hey, any of you broke people want these? <laughs> so as a, so as a result, she starts developing respiratory issues yeah. from a very young age. And one of the things that I, you know, that I found most interesting, you know, she she was the first of six siblings. At five years old, she was already basically running her house mm -hmm. okay, because her mom was working out in the fields. Her dad was working odd jobs. And then when her parents got home, she would go over to some of her family friends' houses and she would tend to work. their sheep. Yeah. She would work. And I'm she just was like, known as a shepherdress. So I'm just thinking, where have I gone wrong with my six year old who sometimes forgets where we put the forks in the house? Yeah. Like why isn't mine? My, my seven year old is already earning a living. Not throwing an allowance because I don't pay him. <laughs> I send him out in the fields. Yeah. Yeah. But so from a very young age, she already had developed or was developing a virtue of, um, of hard work. Yeah. Like she was like what she lacked in, excuse me, in catechesis and what she lacked in smarts, she made up for in, I, I would want to say piety because she understood the like value of hard work. Humility. Yes. She's very uh, humble pie. Yeah. Um, but not only that, and this is something that you see through the rest of her life. Um, they were a very tight family, mm -hmm. right? So like when she was young, she was sent away because she was so sickly and her, her parents knew what a, what a crap hole she lived in. Yep. Um, so they sent her away so that she wouldn't die. Um, but she's very sweet. It is. I mean, it's great. Uh, but she threw out all, I mean, towards the end of her life, which wasn't, I mean, she was like 35, 35 when she died. Yeah. Um, she was very close with all of her siblings. Mm -hmm. She was in constant correspondence with them throughout the entirety of her life. Very close knit family. Very, very pious. She's I mean, it's, it's a beautiful story in the, through the perspective of faith. I mean, it's not a great story for her. She lives a, for lack of a better terms, a crap life. She's mm -hmm. poor, uneducated, constantly sick. She's getting shuffled around. She's overworked. You could say, neglected mm -hmm. um and then you know not to like you know jump the gun but mary kind of comes to her and says uh this life is gonna suck yeah forever yeah in one but, of, but not in the next one yeah in in uh in one of the apparitions which we'll get to our blessed mother says hey i'm gonna make your next life really good but you're gonna have to suffer mm -hmm. through this one with all of her ailments uh and even uh you know, even t after she was blessed with these app uh, with uh, with these uh, apparitions, she still lives a very a life just marked with incredible suffering. Yeah, just she all, she was given last just rites all the freaking time, three different times. Yeah, like when will she? I could imagine. Could you imagine me the priest giving her last rites <laughs> for the, the third time? Be like, is this gonna stick? Okay, are we? Like, are you sure you're dying? Because because. You can't have last rites like you. So like you can't be like my kid <laughs> and, re and receive first <laughs> and communion. Receive three first times. communion for the fourth. <laughs> Dude, did I? Were you there? You were there last Sunday when the second one tried to steal the host again. Oh, again? Oh, I again. didn't see that again. Oh yeah. no. So last weekend we smelled like crap and nobody mm -hmm. wanted to stay in there, which was great because we. So like we were camping. We were camping last weekend. And in the middle of camping, we left our campsite, drove to the Latin Mass to to receive the Blessed Sacrament because uh, hashtag because that's what you do. Yeah, you like there's good luck finding a good enough excuse if you have a, a car to being too far away for a mass. Yeah. Anyway, so we go to mass, and uh, she's kneeling down next to me. She's got her little prayer hand. She, I mean, she's got it perfect. She even has her dominant thumb. She's over got the her, thumb over the thumb, right? And she's like kneeling there and father comes up to her and she goes like this <laughs> and she sticks her tongue out and like father looks at her and he's got like the eucharist in his hand and he's like he's gauging whether or not but she's old funny enough she didn't take it from him last time she took it from the original one from the other priest right yeah. so he like looks at her and he's like trying to figure out how old she is and she looks at like he looks at me and he looks at her and i like look at him i'm like no 
and I hate talking because I don't want to talk in front of the Blessed Sacrament, but I don't want this guy forking but you, out. But you kind of have to. <laughs> and so she was like, Ugh. she was so defeated. Anyway, so long story short, um, how do we get on the subject of so, my kids? So, so St. Oh, yeah. Bernadette <laughs> gets, gets, uh, gets the anointed last rites three last times. Rites, three times. Um, yeah, but uh, go, going back to her humility, you know, after after the apparition ceased, she sought to put it all behind her. She never went back to Lourdes because, I mean, you and I were talking about it. Why would you, like, honestly, why would you want to go back? If you knew that the Blessed Mother was not going to be there mm -hmm. for you anymore, and that was such a big part of your life for about a month and a half, I for multiple months, why would you want to go back? I also think about it like this, right? So who who is not present? in the public ministry of Jesus Christ, Joseph, mm -hmm. right? Because like, you can't, you can't claim to be the God of the universe with your dad. With your dad. <laughs> <laughs> hey dad, can I, Hey, Hey dad, hold this. I got to tell everybody. Can, I, the can I borrow, the can I borrow the camel on, on Friday night? <laughs> I need to, but anyway, so like being as humble as she was, I think Bernadette knew that on a certain level, if she would have remained in Lourdes, that the apparitions wouldn't have been the focal point, that the, the spring wouldn't have been the focal point, the grotto wouldn't have been the focal point. It would have been mm -hmm. her. And, and, and that was something lived, that she still battled with for the rest of her life. Because she lived that out in the um, uh, convent. The, in the convent. Because when she when she joined the sisterhood, she... Is it sisterhood or the... When she joined Sis, the... Sisterhood of the Traveling Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> when she when she joined the convent she really tried to almost downplay it like hey like, it would honestly be like well mick she, jagger going into a room and being like hey guys i know it's me but why don't we just why don't we all just chill out why here don't for we a second? not why don't we just pretend i'm not me so like so that like that reminds me like the head you gave me the name like the, the mother superior mother superior she like calls all of the nuns from like everywhere around there. And this is the other thing not a lot of people know. It's either three or it's six kilometers away from Lourdes is another Marian apparition site. Mm -hmm. And that was huge. It was the biggest in France until Lourdes came in and like roundhouse kicked it in the face. <laughs> um, but anyway, so like Mother Superior calls all of the nuns in from all around. And she's like, she sits everybody down. She's like, <sighs> All right, listen, <laughs> we're going to do this once and once only. And then we're moving past. And then we're going to move <laughs> on because Bernadette's going to get to her life of devotion and all y'all are going to go back to your lives of devotion. And I'm not going to sit around while all of you come in here and ask her to repeat the story because she's got things to do. Yep. So Bernadette tells the entire story and then all of the nuns leave. And then what happens after that? Bishop starts showing they up. They keep asking about like, it. Could you imagine? Like this is, I think this is so fundamental, and it, like, we'll talk about this in a little bit about about Bishop, the Bishop himself. What did the bishops do with Bernadette? They used her as a focal point for fundraising, mm -hmm. right? Like they would bring dignitaries. Oh, hey, let's come over here and and listen to. Bernie, tell her story about Mary as you line my coffer. So I think there's there's a good deal of, and I what I like about some of these, all of the Marian devotions, all of the Marian apparitions, is that Mary is just kind of like slapping mm -hmm. the princes of the church around. Yeah, I think that's, and I think that's a really important thing. And we'll we'll talk about it during during some of these apparitions. Like Mary is not. She's not like rude, but I think she's just kind of like she's stern. Like it's it's not like it's not indignant, but she acts really kind of just like not surprised in her disappointment. Like you know, like when like mom tells you that you have to clean the entire house, mm -hmm. and then she comes home and she knows you didn't clean your entire house, and she just walks in and she's just just like you're just hoping she didn't notice. <sighs> But she's not like mad. She's just like she looks disappointed. But the worst part is, it's 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 almost be, she's not. She, it's almost like she's not disappointed because you lived up to her. You expectations. lived up to her, her low <laughs> expectation, right? Yeah. Um, uh, but but so I think you know go, going back to uh, to Our Lady of Guadalupe as well. It it really just goes 
for me to, to speak to the truth of this apparition because Bernadette could have used this for personal gain, either monetarily, for fame, or for anything, and she did her best to shun away from that, just like um, uh, St. Juan Diego with Our Lady of Guadalupe. If he had a hand in creating this elaborate story, he would have done it in a way that glorified himself or was in his benefit and with both this or both with our lady of guadalupe and both with lords it's not for the betterment Is of it lords I, or lords i think it's i think it's lords fact check us but regardless neither one of these was for the betterment of the person receiving the vision yeah it was in, strictly in for in, increasing devotion to our mother in both cases between i'm gonna say lords you say lords okay um, in Lourdes and Guadalupe, Guadalupe, Guadalupe. If you're that guy from that one NL I went to, um, the the what would you say the apparitioni, the recipient, the recipient is like mocked, scorned, and ridiculed, and ridiculed, yeah. and threatened, and beaten. Juan Diego was going to get his ass kicked by a whole bunch of priests. Bernadette gets stumped by her dad. Yeah. Right? So it's not it's not like they, it's not like there's a whole lot going for them if they were to come forward. Like because we'll go about it or we'll talk about it in the with the I first apparition. Just, I think we should just hop skip to it. Hop skip to it. We're gonna we're gonna just, keep just, talking around these just, 18 apparitions. Yeah, just just a couple so things. Many. There are, but just a couple things just to finish up on the life of Bernadette. So um she lived six, she six years after uh mm-hmm. Lords. Um, she uh, devoted herself to the Order of the Sisters of Charity of Nevers. Um, she was given the novice's veil, and that's pretty much the only rank that she attained because mm-hmm. she died very young. Uh, she was uh, assigned to help out in the infirmary, kind of fitting for her, and in the sacristy. Well, they, so that's kind of like an insult. Mm-hmm. Like they, they told her her ministry was in the infirmary because she was there so often. Yeah, but also in the sacristy, which also is there because of her significant devotion and devout uh or, or her devotion after uh after the apparitions mm-hmm. and then uh so she spent a lot of time uh in the convent sick and then on uh, december 8th on the feast of the immaculate conception she went to the chapel for the last time three days later totally bedridden could not get out and then on march 20th she was anointed again mm-hmm. uh and then her final words were Hail Mary, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for me, a poor sinner. So even at the end of her life. Humble as pie. Absolutely. Yeah. So beautiful life. Uh, um, a very, very, very good example and role model for us to follow as uh, as hopeful saints in the church. Yeah. And, and like, I think she's really like, she is, I mean, obviously she's the patron saint of suffering. But I think she really exemplifies through her devotion um, the 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 beauty and penitential suffering. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And one final thing, just as another roundhouse kick, they exhumed her body, and she has been found to be incorrupt. Incorrupt. They cut How? into her liver, and it was quoted as being supple. Which kind of creeped me out <laughs> when I heard that because I like I have flashbacks of Anthony Hopkins talking to Edward Norton talking about <laughs> whatever that <laughs> it's so creepy. I it ate was... his liver with some fava beans and a nice key and, and tea. <laughs> it's so supple. Like it's like way to be. Su- it's like one of the way to be mo- super it's, creepy. It's like the word moist. Uh are you creeped out by the word moist? Yeah, of course. Really? Of course. I'm not. Hmm. It's You're very wrong. moist in the air right now. You're wrong. <laughs> I'm not wrong. I'm right. Are you creeped out by belly buttons? Because <laughs> it's it's like it's like the word moist. Half somebody's attacking. What? I mean, I that guess... was a fly, and I just killed you. Your belly button is technically your okay. first mouth. <laughs> no, it's not. No, the cord is the first mouth. I guess the cord would be like the spoon or the straw. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's let's go on to the apparitions. All right. Um, all right. So, um, so these all started 
uh, February 11th, 1858. And that date is going to be very important. Super not, important. Not, not the February date, but the 1858. 1858 is going to be super important. Do we want to say why we're now or? Yes. Okay. Because it's 858 years after 1000, which it's, I, I, I totally <laughs> know that. It's 1858. We'll come back to that at uh, at the uh, the 18th apparition. 16th. 13th. I think it's the 16th apparition. 10. All right. Nine, eight. So thank you, Houston. All right. So um, the first one. So let's set the set the scene. It's cold. Burr. Bernadette. Bernadette's family. How many of her sisters? One. It's one sister and a friend. And what are they doing? They're going to get firewood because it's cold. Very cold. It's not, it is February in France. And not moist. <laughs> <laughs> it's very unmoist so it's cold so they're gonna go out and gather firewood and bernadette wants to go so she's talking to her mom mm -hmm. she wants to go her mom's like no you don't get to go and why does she want her to not go aside from bernadette being like accident and sickness prone i think that, and this is like tragic and beautiful all at the same time bernadette was wearing the family's only pair of socks that sucks. It was her day to wear the socks. It was it, well, no, it's like they were her socks. Yeah, and it's like how beautiful is that? And again, going back to this being a very faithful family and a very loving family, the sick kid gets the socks, mm -hmm. right? So uh, they're going to get fireworks or fireworks. <laughs> That'd be rad. Kabam! Totally different apparition at this point. I know. <laughs> Mary's lighting it off left and right. So they're going to get firewood. And they come upon a, a stream, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, she goes to cross the stream, but she's got socks and she doesn't want them to get wet. So she calls out to her sister and her friend, hey, throw some stones in this creek river thing so that I can climb on them and not get my feet wet. Mm -hmm. And you know what they say? No. Deuces. <laughs> We're out. Sucks to be you, cripple. <laughs> but I don't think they said that. Yeah. I don't know what the French word for cripple is, but I think, I think it's I think it's just French. <laughs> I'm gonna dog on the French forever. This podcast is gonna be Catholic Guardians, aka dogging on the Frenchies. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, so then it, she hears so yeah so she hears a gust of wind. She hears two gusts of wind, mm -hmm. right? And like the first one's like ooh, she turns around, nothing there. Ooh, turns around. What's going on? There's a woman, a beautiful woman mm -hmm. praying. And what is she praying with? The rosary. The rosary. A beautiful pearl rosary. And the woman is dressed in all white. She's got a blue sash, white veil on, and on her feet is a yellow rose on each foot. So two yellow roses. And the feet is going to be important when it comes to the second apparition. And I'll explain why when we get to the second apparition. Yes. Okay. And why her feet being visible is important. Yeah. So she goes up to her, the woman, this beautiful woman, says, you know what she says? Nothing. Quote, unquote. She says nothing. Just smiles at her. Mm -hmm. And then what? Peace. See ya. See you later. So Bernadette's like, hey. And then she chases after her friends. Hey, guys. Come here. Let me tell you about hey, this. Hey, did you see the beautiful woman? And they're like, no. What beautiful woman? <laughs> what beautiful woman? You're crazy. So uh, they end up going home. So they go home. But so once Bernadette realizes that she's the only one who saw the apparition, she asks her sister, uh, Tonette, to not tell her parents. But Tonette can't keep her mouth shut. Tells her parents. And then they're both beaten as a result. <laughs> For spreading lies. Like, Bernadette, you didn't see a woman. Bam. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yeah. I'm probably going to have to cut that. You're going to have to cut that out. <laughs> um, Hashtag demonetized. Uh, so, so not only were they beaten, but they were expressly told, do not go back to the grotto. So, a few days pass, and... and okay, do we know why? Oh, okay, I think we should explain why we... Uh, why they they were not allowed to go back to the grotto. Do you know why? Why? It's like a dumpster. 
They dispose a lot of medical bandages there. Mm. It's just kind of like a, it's literally a crap hole, right? It literally, I mean, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be like facetious or, or sarcastic. It's literally just disgusting. It's a garbage dump. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, you've got Bernadette who's sick prone. So like mom, who's trying to keep her kid from being stir crazy and dead is kind of like, like if you had a kid who was allergic to everything, would you send them to like a daycare? No, because daycares are in essence depends on how much you have to work dumps. <laughs> daycares are human dumps. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, her, Bernadette's mom was not was not happy and pleased because she didn't want her daughter hanging out in an area that she knew she mm-hmm. would get sick from. And, but and grottos yeah. were that. But a few days later, she asked for permission to go again to the grotto, and her mom says, "Okay, sure." So that following Sunday. Uh, February 14th, she goes back, even though her mother had forbidden her, she asked for permission. Her mom says, yes. So then what she does, cause this is after, uh, this is after a Sunday high mass. She gets a little vial of holy water and she goes back to the grotto and she starts, uh, she starts saying a rosary and it's her and, uh, it's her and the two girls that she went with before. Mm-hmm. So, They go there, they start saying the rosary, and here's a quote from Bernadette. Um, I had hardly finished the first decade when... Decorate? I I keep saying that. The first decade when I saw the same lady. So she she sees the lady, and what does she do? She starts throwing the holy water at her, just... Because as as poorly catechized as she was, and this is why it's important that... She was poorly catechized. Very poorly catechized. And partially because... Again, no disrespect to Holy Mother Church. The church sucks at catechizing. Mm-hmm. But on top of that, she missed a lot of her catechesis classes because she was sick. Constantly sick. Mm-hmm. So, so, but, so going back to the feet, why it was important for the Blessed Mother's feet to be visible at the time, it was very commonly believed that any demonic or evil entity would have cloven feet. So they would have the feet of a pig or of a goat or anything like that. So in order, just like what we've talked, look at. I was looking at your feet. I'm wearing shoes. You're good. But so so going back to what we've talked about before, a, you can't put a clove in a converse. <laughs> going back to what we've talked about before, with our mother appearing in a way for for somebody to easily recognize her, and for her to appear like that, barefoot with human feet, it all it automatically lets Bernadette know. I'm not somebody evil. But then Bernadette's like, you know what? I don't know a lot, but I do know this. So throw in holy water <laughs> at her. And all, all she does is uh, the apparition smiles and bows to her. And uh, Bernadette says, I sprinkled her with holy water. The more she smiled and bowed her head and the more I saw her make signs. I went on saying my rosary. And when she had finished her rosary, gone. She, the, the apparition's gone. So I just I just love that so much that image of Bernadette throwing holy water at her blessed mother and she's just smiling like a mother would like her kids doing something so cute you can't be mad at it yeah and something so not just cute but like innocent it's not it's not what I'm thinking I'm thinking about something that's so simple. I see something evil. I'm gonna throw holy yeah, water. Yeah, like at it. like kids do simple things that mm-hmm. like make sense, right? Yeah. And so like my son this morning, I'm in the garage. I'm lifting, lifting the the earth. Yoke City comes out, and I like I had my my mug of coffee, mm-hmm. and it was like I had like a sip left. And he's like, "Hey, Dad, do you want some more coffee?" And I was like, "Man." I'd love some coffee. He's like, oh, can I make you some? And I was like, I'd love it. Keep getting better. And, and he knows how to make coffee, right? Mm-hmm. Like he understands, like the filter goes here, the grounds go in there, you fill it with ice because we do ice coffee, mm-hmm. hit the over ice. So he knows it all, right? I'm in the garage, I'm working out, and I hear abnormal noises. <laughs> so I put the weights down and I... Go into the house, and he's standing there in the kitchen, and my wife is going to kill him when she hears this. He's got a bowl, <laughs> and he's got a knife, 
and he's got coffee ground, <laughs> coffee beans in the ball, and he's going like this. Step, step, step. <laughs> He's stabbing, he's stabbing the coffee beans. And I look at him, I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, hey, we didn't have any more coffee grounds left. So I was grinding you coffee. So I ask him, why are you stabbing them? And again, this is the, this is the simple part. Mm -hmm. He points to the grinder and he says, that's a knife and a bowl. Yep. This is a knife and a bowl. I thought I could grind more coffee for you. That's so cute. So I take the steak knife away from him <laughs> and put it away. And I, I, I thank him. I give him a big hug and a big kiss. And he's got that dumb smile that I love. Just that innocent smile. And then I get the coffee grounds out of the freezer because we had like an entire bag <laughs> full of coffee. But it's, that, that he missed. You forgot. Big air quote, oh, whoops. Right? But it, it, to that point, it goes to the simple. Here's a knife. Here's a bowl. Coffee grounds. Here's a vision. Here's some holy water. Make it go away. <laughs> and it's like, if it's bad, holy if, water. If it's bad, it'll go it's away. Like, it's a very rudimentary and childlike, simple, mm -hmm. but authentic view of, yeah. of how things work. Holy water, good. Sprinkle on it, bad. If they scream, bad. If they smile, good. And... Our mother smiles. There we go. Right? Yep. It's a helicopter. I don't think people can hear it because I, I mute the background noise for that. Oh, cool. So are we on to three? We are on to the third apparition. Okay, so third apparition, she's requested to go for 15 days straight by our blessed mother to mm -hmm. return for 15 days. Yep. Um, her mom says, obviously, not only no, but I'm going to beat you no. Yep. <laughs> right. She's not very pleased. Bernadette manages to persuade her mother. And all the while, and I think this is something that's very beautiful. Um, obviously, her mother and Bernadette are equally worried about Bernadette's health. Right. But Bernadette is is told by our blessed mother in a private revelation, private revelation that um, she's not going to be happy in this life but in mm -hmm. the next. Yep. And I think that quote is kind of the theme for Bernadette's entire ministry throughout the rest of her life is that she's going to wear this burden in sickness and pain and penance with dignity. And that's how she's going to live out her life. And with grace. Yeah. Dignity, grace, and piety. Mm-hmm. Right? She's not blaming God. She's not angry. She's always happy. She's always very, very humble. But she's in a great deal of pain. They think that she died of tuberculosis and cancer. Yeah. A little mix of the two. A just, a, just a little mix of the a two. A lethal mix. If I had like glasses, I'd be like Horatio Kane. <laughs> a lethal. A lethal mix. Uh, but this one is also really important because this is the first time that the apparition speaks. Yes. And, the, and she says, hey, I need you to do this. I need you to come back I, for the next 15 days. I can't remember what, rebel, what, what, I always say revelation, what apparition it is, but Bernadette brings her a tablet to write her name down on. Like, what a kid thing to do. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Help. Hi. Who? It's not like she can read or write anyways, so, a, so it doesn't really... And this, is the, and this is the other really important thing that we don't... We, we're not going to talk about it throughout the course of the, uh, the apparitions. The language that they're speaking is kind of like a... It's not a dialect. It's a regional language that's very, very uh, rare. Yeah, she, she spoke in Occitan? O-C-C-I-T-A-N. Oxycontin. Yeah, Oxycontin. Sorry. Um, but that, but that was a regional language that Bernadette used. But very rare, very rare. And here's the other thing: when she refers, and I, I'm going to massacre the name, so I'm not even going to try it. It, it. We'll get into this in, in later apparition. the The words that she uses to describe the Blessed Mother is just that woman. Mm -hmm. But it's not just like that woman, like in a derogatory, like, oh, it's that chick. But it it it, it conveys a level of not holiness, but kind of like 
reverence? Not reverence, but it, it like it conveys a, a a very high, like almost royalty, like that. This is somebody that held holy in woman, esteem. right? Like yeah. something like that. <clears throat> um, but again, like English is a super ugly language. Yeah. So we 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 can't describe things as well mm -hmm. as we'd like. Yeah. But something to note as well. So in that regional language, um, our blessed mother spoke it reportedly very properly. It was a very formal way in which she spoke that language. Which again was probably, excuse me, the first time I got to get to here. So I'm, I'm in view of the camera yeah. and you. It was probably the first time that Bernadette was spoken to in that way. Mm -hmm. Not only because she was young, she, she was sick, but she was she, spoken to by a ro by really royalty. She So she's sick, young. And a she, and a she shepherdess, she'd probably never been spoken to formally mm -hmm. in that way ever in her entire life. And yet, and this is something that a mother would do, like when your your daughters, when they're sick or when they're tired or when they're in pain, the level that you talk to them, baby, sweetheart, mm -hmm. my love. Right, those terms of endearment that we have for our children, and the the way that we talk to them, it's not so slangy like "Hey, tough it out." I mean, sometimes we do, but like there's a, a a difference in the way that we speak to our children when we when we have intimate and compassionate moments with them mm -hmm. versus the way that we do to somebody else, right? And this is and again, like we're we're kind of skipping around a little bit, but I really like where we're going. That speaks to how our blessed mother thinks about us as humanity. How would you talk to a homeless woman on the street? Yeah, here's a dollar. I don't have a dollar. I don't yeah. need change. Get away from me. Yeah. Stop it with your stupid games. Can I ask you a question? You just did. <laughs> Peace. Right? That's my favorite answer to homeless people when they, you know, belligerently bother me. But... Mary, the mother of God, Theotokos, is speaking to a young, ignorant, ill-educated, dying, poor shepherd girl as if you were speaking to a queen. Mm -hmm. I think it's beautiful. Like, yeah. How would a mother talk to you? Yeah. Okay, let's go on. Cool. Uh, so fourth apparition, uh, this is when... Uh, or this originated the custom of carrying a lighted candle mm -hmm. to the grotto because St. Bernadette goes to the grotto with a lighted candle. And this is also when word starts to spread and people start to gather. She's uh, she, There are eight other people present, including her mother and two of her aunts. Um, so now mom's on board. So now mom's on board. Now the family's on board. And now other people are starting to see or they're at least curious enough to, to want to know why this sick, poor little girl keeps going back to this place. Yes. So that's pretty much the fourth apparition. Yeah. Uh, fifth apparition, uh, there's like 30 people there. Yep. So we go from one to three to eight to 30 to 30. Am I at 30? Yeah, we're at 30. Yeah, right. yeah. Fifth, fifth not, apparition. I can't count. <laughs> I believe diversity is an old, <laughs> an old so wooden There's shoe. 30 people there, and um, our blessed mother speaks to Bernadette. Bernadette is it, it says that um, our blessed mother, but she still doesn't know who she is, mm -hmm. reveals to her a prayer that she is to pray. Every day. Every day, but she's not supposed to write it down or tell anybody about it. Private revelation. Right? This is a prayer. How awesome would that be to receive a prayer from, from, our, Mary. from Mary? This is only for you. Yeah. This is a special prayer. This is only for you. It goes back to that mother relationship. Like mm -hmm. it's some, it, it is a secret just between the two of us. Like, how beautiful is that? So I, I used to do this, and I, I, I've fallen out of the habit in the last couple of months because my son's older, and I don't kiss him every night when he goes to bed. Mm -hmm. I usually just give him the hug and a kiss, but I don't. he doesn't want me to tuck him in anymore. It breaks my heart. Yeah. But ever since he was an infant, 
I used to kiss him on his forehead and I'd say, I'd kiss him and I'd say, I love you. I'd kiss him again and I'd say, I'll always love you. And I'd kiss him again and I'd say, I'll always protect you. And then as he got older and he could talk, I'd kiss him and he'd say it. Hmm. And I'd kiss him again, he'd say it again, we'd say it together. And it was it was our thing forever. And I don't I don't think my wife knows this. She does now. Boom. All of you do. But it's it's such a beautiful thing when you're given something so private between a parent and a child. And again, going back to mothers or, or our mother being the blessed mother and just doing things specifically for her children, for her children, right? Like, and not her children as in, you know, like a general, like vague, all of her children, but like this one child specifically, yes. there is a secret, a beautiful secret just between the two of them. An individuality. Yeah. Right. Like it's a, it's a very intimate and personal relationship that our blessed mother yep. And this is something that Bernadette does for the rest of her life is she refers to Mary as her mother, mm -hmm. not as our mother, not as the mother, but as her mother. Right. And I think that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. So that's, and that's in essence, that's the entirety of the fifth rev uh, apparition. Thank you. Uh, sixth apparition the next day. So we go from 30 people the next day. There's over 100 people there. So you have a about a 300% increase. That's a lot of percentages. That's a lot of percentages. Um, and the apparition... Percents or percentages? That's a lot of percent... Percentize. That's a lot of numbers. It's a lot of numbers to go up. It's a big, um, big number <laughs> increase. Um, but so the apparition tells her, you will pray to God for sinners. So a call for repentance and mm -hmm. a call to uh, pray for uh, pray for those who need it. But then this one is uh, is good, be or not good, but this one, uh, it gets the attention of the police. So afterwards, she gets interrogated by the police commi commissioner, Dominique Jacomet. Not Commissioner Gordon? Not Commissioner Gordon. <sighs> commissioner Jacomet. Uh, Jacques Rousseau. So she. <laughs> I'm the <guy>. I'm the king. <laughs> so she gets interrogated. I, if my kids I say, listen to this, they're going to say hamburger. For I, say, I say interviewed. She was interrogated by a police officer. And then afterwards, her dad. And this is, is like French interrogation in the 1800s. In the 1800s, when the French were a world power. Um, so then afterwards, her father is talking with the police commissioner and her father's like, look, dude, don't worry. I got this. This will not happen again. And it did not happen the next day. But then the next, next day next after day, that, it happens again. There's a seventh apparition. And there's 150 people there. Yeah. So it just keeps growing. Yeah. More and more people hear about this and more people come to see. And again, it's a private revelation to Bernadette, to St. Bernadette. And uh, that's it. Yeah. There's I, a secret that, hey, this is for you. Don't see, tell See, I don't anybody. think it's a secret. I think it's just a private revelation made specifically between a mother and her daughter. That's a secret. That's not a secret. She didn't tell anybody. But that's, that's not a secret. Secrets are things people shouldn't know. This is just it's none of their business. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's correct. I'm going um, to Google this right You now. look it up while I talk about the eighth apparition. So the eighth apparition, the next day, we go from 150 people to about 250 people there. And okay, I guess it is. Not known or seen or meant yeah, to be known or seen by others. Yeah, a secret isn't always a negative thing. But, um, you know, friends don't make secrets. Secrets make friends. Is that, is that what you mean? Friends don't. Keep secrets, but secrets no. I mean that's that's Stranger What's... Things. Friends don't lie. And then her nose bleeds and she starts bashing extra extra dimensional beans around. Just super cool. But so during the eighth appearance, the message uh given to Bernadette from Our Lady was penance, 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 pray to God for sinners, kiss the ground as an act of penance for sinners. So more call for prayer more call to um you know pray for the grace for those who really need it yeah which then really digs into the ninth apparition yep um, which is a big one it's a big one and it, it's in line with not only and this is the big thing jewish tradition 
right? And this is where we start really getting into these last apparitions are leading into a penitential act. Mm -hmm. So the Jews had a penitential tradition of eating sour root, mm -hmm. right? So it's kind of like eating stuff that tastes really sour and tastes like crap, but you're doing it penitentially, right? Yeah. So Bernadette is 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 visited by Mary and told to dig into the ground. And in the ground, she'll find water. Yep. And then she's supposed to drink that water. And then around where she was told to dig, where there was like no running water, just like a little puddle of mud. Yep. There were like weeds. And Bernadette was told by our Blessed Mother to pluck them out of the ground and eat them. So this poor, dirty, uneducated, uneducated, sick girl, constantly, perpetually sick girl, is seen by hundreds of people digging in the ground, drinking mud, and eating weeds. Everybody think, everybody thinks she's done, gone, lost her mind. And then she's interrogated again. Yo, why are you digging and drinking what mud are, water? What are you doing? And then the uh, two days later, um, about 800 people are present for the 10th apparition and the spring is flowing. So what used to be just muddy water, muddy water that she drank is now clear water coming through. Do you remember that thing that we did when we were kids up at the, the cabin? Yeah. And we <sighs> diverted the river. We made. So this this is a long story short. When we were kids, we used to, um, there was a, a cabin up in a, uh, a wooded area that our family had owned, our extended family, not our intimate family. And there was a creek that used to run through and we'd go play in the creek. Well, we'd play around the creek because the creek was freezing cold water because it used to come off of a very high mountain range. Yep. And we, we were looking at this creek and there was a... Uh, man, I keep putting this microphone in front of my face. I feel really sorry. I'm sorry, guys. There was a divergence. So there was a fork in this creek, right? And you and I decided one year that uh, we were going to change it. So we spent an entire summer damming up half of that creek to divert the water the, the way that we thought it should go. Which probably ended up like flooding a couple of houses, <laughs> but whatever. They were wealthy. Probably. And they, could, they could afford to fix that. That was what? We're, I'm 31. You're 30? 30. Golly gosh, Batman, you're old. Yeah. I was up there not too long ago. Still flows that way. No way. So something that you and I did 20 years ago mm -hmm. is a still there, ago. right? So I think it's really important that we look at it and we, we these are long lasting things. 1858, Bernadette digs a hole with her hands in the ground and it's still there. It's a flowing, what would you call that? Creek? It's a stream. It's, it's a, a spring. It, it's, it is. I mean, I, th I think one of the figures that I read is that like there's like 40 liters a minute that flow. That's a lot. That's a lot of water. And one poor, sick little girl, because she's she's very young at this point. She was born in uh, 1844, so it's 1858. At this, so she's 14 years old. Yeah. And she dug that with her hands. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Yeah, beautiful. Yep. So uh, are we on 10? You're, we're on uh, we're on 11. Okay. So this um, there's a thousand people there now. Yeah, that's a lot. That's over one over followed the course by of, over the zeros. course of like two weeks, a couple days, handful of days. Yep. Right. Same handful that made a spring. Um, apparition occurs. And then afterwards, she's again, quote unquote, questioned, questioned. but this time it's by a judge. Yeah. And, uh, cause she's starting to get the attention, like what everybody's asking. And, and I think again, like what's going on, we're, 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 we're looking back at a time where people were very superstitious and very not power hungry, but kind of concerned with like the, the poor people gathering in large numbers. Yes. Right. And the government had a huge issue with poor people coming together because those dang poor people. Cause normally when poor people 
come together like that, there's a revolution. Uh, especially in France. They've got a big, <laughs> a big history of there that were, crap. There were a lot of them. Those poor bastards. So, uh, so then going into March, so the next day, so you have a thousand people on the 28th of February, and then the next day there's 15 hundred people there and this is when you have the first that's a uh, 50 percent increase that's all yeah that's that is it's a big increase that's a big one so uh it's a five with a zero it's five, it's five with two zeros oh 50 percent yeah are you an idiot no you said five with two i zeros. just don't i just yeah because 1500 that's five with two zeros after it but where was the one we weren't talking about the one. We were talking about the five and the zeros. What are you common core math <laughs> right now? Um, so this is when you have the first instance of a miraculous healing as well. So there was a housewife, Catherine, Catherine Latapie, Latapie. She was nine months pregnant and had paralysis of the ulnar. I always say it right, so I'll say it slowly. The ulnar nerve uh, in her arm uh, following an accident. She washed in the spring, regained mobility of her arm, and immediately went into labor. <laughs> Her water broke in that water. So, uh, so she immediately it's goes. A moist experience. And while she, <laughs> could you imagine that? Oh, I can feel my arm. Oh, the oh baby. Oh, the baby's coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is such a big day for me. Like you don't even have a lot of time to reflect on the fact that you have mobility back in your arm because you need to get to the hospital. Well, no, now she can grab her husband by the throat and <laughs> you uh, did this to me. Uh, but so, uh, and this guy's going to be, uh, he's going to be important later on, but so she relays these events to the physician, Dr. Pierre Dozu. And so then he, as a man of science, as, as quote somebody, unquote. quote unquote science, somebody who's been trained in medicine says, you know what? I'm going to start collecting information about I like, this. And that's French medicine, the mm -hmm. kind of medicine that would club people with spears in their brain to fix mental illnesses. So we're talking high class medicine. Yeah. Like you're just not Obamacare, you're Obamacare platinum. <laughs> That's the kind of healthcare we're talking about right now. Um so the uh the next apparition, our lady visits Bernadette and um in their conversation, our lady tells Bernadette that Bernadette needs to go to a priest. Yep. Because our lady requires a procession in her name and to a chapel and to that, build a chapel that doesn't exist yet yes so not only does she has to make not only does bernadette have to get this priest to make a procession to this lady that nobody knows but the procession is to lead to a chapel that doesn't exist yet it um, it sounds so much like our lady of guadalupe hey go tell the bishop y'all need to come here and you need to build me uh, you need to build a chapel. The, uh, they said a temple in uh, mm. Our Lady of Guadalupe. You need to build me a temple. And here she's saying, but you again, need let's to go build me a chapel. Let's think about the terminology here. Mm -hmm. Aztecs built temples. Yep. The French surrendered. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, I'm sorry. The French built chapels. Chapels. Western Europeans built chapels. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> imperialism. Um, Part yeah, so so she so she goes with two of her aunts to Father Pay Ramel, and she says, hey, just like with Saint Juan Diego, hey, you don't know who I am, <laughs> but I've been visited. But at this, excuse me, at this point, Mary or sorry, uh, Bernadette still doesn't know who this is. Mm -hmm. So she's like, hey, this beautiful lady is telling me you guys need to have a procession in her name, and you need to build a chapel. And what does the priest do? Where am I going to get the money? Who is this lady? You need to, and I love this, prove it. He says, Give me yeah. a sign. He says, go away. Don't go back to the grotto. Just forget about it. Um, and so he then orders other priests not to go to the grotto. Um, but St. Bernadette was determined, so she went back with one of the priest's friends who believed her, and they were like, hey, we really need this done. So... She was dismissed again. She wasn't threatened to be beaten like uh, like Saint Juan, like Juan Diego. Diego. <laughs> but she, but, but, well, but she, they were, But again, the, going those back, South American yeah. priests are a little bit more serious than these Frenchies. <laughs> but going back to the time, a poor, young, sick girl is going to a priest saying, "Build this, build a church." And I, 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 just I, not going to take her seriously. I don't have the quote in front of me, but um, 
Bernadette was quite quippy in her remarks. Yes. And I can't remember if it's this apparition or so, or a later one, but in essence, the priest or a bishop is questioning her why our blessed mother or why this apparition would visit her when her when she is such a lowly, poor servant girl. Basically, while you're a nobody. When you're a nobody, and Bernadette replies with, well, if there was somebody lower, she would have been visited. <laughs> right? So it's kind of like, <laughs> listen, you pompous fruity limp wristed turds like our mother is coming to us so the yeah. next one so the next one this this one's is good. This me so no this one's me 14 i'm the evens so she goes back she's visited by our blessed mother and she says i need to know your name in order for this to be done i need to know your name and our blessed mother just smiles at her and then disappears <laughs> <laughs> so hey mom I need this. Bye. Not even bye. I just, she ghosted her. I just really need... If you want this done, I just need to know your name. And... Gone. <laughs> Go. Uh, so the next one... Now we're at 9,000 people. 9,000 people. That's a lot of people. It's an insane amount of people. It's a lot of people, especially for a little town, right? Uh, she goes back to the priest. Um, she, again... Is, is told to, to request a chapel. There's no response. Yep. Mary smiles, tells the priest. Priest laughs at her, goes back. There's more private revelation, right? She's not commanded, but she's, she's told to go bathe in the water. And then more talk about the chapel. Yeah. Like Mary's kind of insistent. Like, oh, yeah, I really need this done. Mm -hmm. Go take a bath in the healing water. Come back. Listen, but so in this, this happens over a, a fortnight. So over a period two of weeks. two weeks. So she's continually bathing. Um, she's continually praying. And then our mother reveals three more secrets to her mm -hmm. and says, do not. And f the word is forbade to quote uh, St. Bernadette. She forbade me to tell anybody. And I have been faithful until now. So, hey, do your prayers. Hey, that, that sounds so familiar. Do you remember when until. we were... Until. Until now, it's almost like when we were talking about the perpetual virginity of our Blessed oh, Mother. Oh, and St. Joseph and, and our Blessed Mother did not know each other until, until Christ had been Christ. born. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So so it's not like it's not like afterwards, St. Bernadette was like, I've been faithful until now. Here's what, here's she, the here's what she said. Um, but so that that's a... I mean, that's a... That's, that's a sign of perseverance and humility on Bernadette's part. She knows that she's being mocked. She know she doesn't know a lot because she's not she's educated. Not, not only mocked, but here's the other thing. Like, could you imagine? Ha like, so, like, let's think later on in Bernadette's life. Like, you've got nothing. You're dying. You're sick. You're poor. You're in a convent. You're in the infirmary, and all of these bishops, these nobles, these yuppie ups are visiting you. And you've got information that nobody else in existence has ever had, period, mm -hmm. given to you directly by the mother of God, and you don't say it. That is some serious, not only humility, That's but fortitude. That is, it really is. Like, could you imagine having a secret like that and then not, and not like, and people know you've <coughs> got crap that you're like not supposed to say. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine like our bishop being all chummy up with you? Like, hey, well, I know you're not supposed to say this, but come on, it's me. It's me we're talking about. And I would have been like, you never even responded to my letter. You didn't even know me. But at the... <laughs> <laughs> I, I do not know you. Um, but at I this... feel like that's written down somewhere. <laughs> but so at this point, it's not only a secret so there have been four secrets and a special prayer given directly to bernadette that she's not supposed to tell anybody so but so bernadette knows that she's being mocked she knows that she's being ridiculed but she still goes back time and time again over the course of these next two weeks and she continually asks what is your name mm -hmm. tell me your name and i'll do it so then going into the 16th apparition on march 25th she, after the fortnight, I asked her three times consecutively. And every time, she just got a smile. What is your name? 
yeah, how about a smile instead? Well, what is your name? And it's so motherly, like, come on, you know. Like, really, like, like, who else comes to you with roses on their feet and a rosary? But so the fourth time, Bernadette says, she stopped smiling with her arms down. She raised her eyes to heaven and then folding her hands over her breast, she said, I am the Immaculate Conception. And that is so important because this happens in 1858. And what happened in 1854? The church dogmatically defined Mary being immaculately conceived. As the Immaculate Conception. Ba-bam! And as as somebody who was poorly catechized, and as a recent development, Bernadette did not know this. Mm. So she did she, not... She, not only did she not know it, it wouldn't have been likely... That even a highly educated <clears throat> lay member would have known that too, mm-hmm. right? Because it took it took time for it's, word at that. It's at not that time like spread. now when the Pope says something ignorant AF, <coughs> it, it gets blasted out on Vatican.va <laughs> or Twitter or YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, right? Like there was none of that stuff. So letters got sent out. Yep. It took time to disseminate information from you know, cardinals to bishop, bishops to other bishops and bishops to priests, priests to nuns. And nuns were doing the majority of the education back then. Mm -hmm. So it's not like Bernadette would have been privy to such a recent development Mm -hmm. as the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And that is telling because when she goes back to the priest, she finally has what she would consider a name. So she goes back to the priest and says... Hey, I I have something. She said, I am the Immaculate Conception. And the priest questions her very intensely on this. Like, where did you hear this? Where did you, hear this where from did a you nun? get this? Did you get it from your parents? Where did you get this from? And St. Bernadette's like, no, I, I got it from Our Lady. Do you know what this means? I don't know what it means. I repeated it to myself on my way over here so that I would not forget and that I would be able to tell you clearly what was told. So then he dismisses her again. Not in a negative way, though. This this time he just tells her to go away and then he drops to his knees and goes and visits the bishop in Tarbes, T-A-R-B-E-S. Because... Tarbe. Tarbe. Because at this point, he starts to realize, oh... Oh, oh, big O. And what does the bishop say? The bishop says, stay away from the grotto. Because at the time, the religion, the clergy were encouraged to downplay this, downplay and dissuade people who were coming forward as having, uh, as saying that they were having uh, apparitions or visions. And why would that be? Maybe because the bishops didn't want to lose power. Hmm. Yep. So I'm rubbing my beard and looking at the camera <laughs> intently as if it's almost like we have that today. The camera keeps getting in my way. But so, I mean, the 16th, really, really powerful apparition. So <clears throat> 17th apparition. Um, this is where a, the physician, the physician mm-hmm. that you previously had mentioned, a uh, physician... Uh, Jacques Rousseau, Hamburger. Hamburger. Uh, witnesses Bernadette placing a candle flame on her hand for two minutes. Nothing happens to her hand. He inspects her hand afterwards. Mm-hmm. Nothing had happened. And then um, later on, he places another candle to her hand. And what does she say? She yanks her hand back and goes, you're burning me. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And the quote that uh, that he wrote, I record this fact just as I have seen it without attempting to explain it. Many persons who were present at the time can confirm what I have said. So he's not saying, listen, I know why. He's just saying, listen, it is what it is. I don't know. I can't tell you. I'm just telling you what I saw. I'm not even going to try. Not even gonna try. Um, so then, uh, so that so that seventeenth apparition was on uh, the seventh of April, and then on the eighth of June, the mayor of Lords, because of how many people were coming to this grotto and the the, the scene, feelings. the scene that it was causing for the town, effectively to have so many people coming there, he barricaded the grotto and put armed guards around it to prevent visitors. Mm-hmm. Um, 
again, it, uh, the they the the secular government is in fear of a an uprising against mm-hmm. the secular government. But this is the big thing about that: the government is not entirely secular, right? You have like a smaller state-run government mm-hmm. that is secular, but France was not a secular government, right? They had holy leaders, holy yep. rulers who had given obedience to Rome. Yep. Right? And were you going to go into the the, the king? Uh, not yet. Um, but so visitors, when they tried to go to the grotto, they were fined for kneeling near it or even talking about it in town. So there were punitive punishments play, or punitive measures. Are placed you telling on... me that French didn't have free speech? Not constitutionally enshrined free speech. Hashtag Bill of Rights. Whoosh. Separation of church and state in my <laughs> life. But. Um, so then uh, July 16th, 1858, the 18th and the final apparition. So Bernadette goes back to the grotto. She finds that it's been barricaded because as as time goes on, she went back to the grotto less and less. So mm-hmm. in the in the first few apparitions, it was every day or every other day. And then after the revelation of the of of her being the Immaculate Conception, then everything started slowing down. Mm-hmm. And so Bernadette goes to the grotto. She in essence has completed her mission. Exactly. The chapel is getting built. All of this is moving forward. Yep. You have people uh, engaging in pilgrimages. It's still the number one pilgrimage site for all of um, Catholicism. I thought that was Our Lady of Guadalupe. Is it? I think Our Lady of Guadalupe is number one, but this is this is one, I think of, the, it might, this is one it, of the top. It might be the... I don't know. Hold on. Okay. I, while, you, while you're looking that up, up, so... She goes to the she goes to the barricade. She kneels uh, outside a fence by the riverbank, and to quote Saint Bernadette, um, "I thought I was at the grotto at the same distance I was at all other times. All I saw was Our Lady, and she was more beautiful than ever." And that was it. That that was the final apparition. After that, our Blessed Mother did not appear to Saint Bernadette. Bernadette tried to move on with her life, but you know, as much as she tried to shun the fame that uh, was effectively bestowed on her, um, she kept get it's it's kind of like the Godfather Part Three. Every time I try to leave, they keep bringing me back. Um, so, a couple years later, when she's about, I think she's about sixteen, she gets brought before an Episcopal council, and she's being questioned by uh, by some more bishops. And uh, I think it was it was uh, Bishop Lawrence asked her before at the at Lawrence, the, what of Arabia? <laughs> That's um, going to go on the movie. Uh, so he asked her, tell us one more time who she said she was. And Bernadette mimics the movements that Mary did. She opens up her hands, looks up to heaven, crosses her hands over her breasts and says and repeats the words, I am the Immaculate Conception. And the bishop starts crying. And he starts asking the other priests and the other bishops there, did you see her face? And to me, that just says, for a moment, Bernadette was was transfigured. Into and in, and instead of seeing St. Bernadette, what they saw was they saw the Blessed Virgin in front of them. And how beautiful is that? Like, she doesn't want this life anymore, but she can still be a conduit for our Blessed Mother to mm-hmm. reach out to other people. And then, you know, after that, she uh she takes her uh what are the two the two levels she takes temporary she takes final. her uh her temporary vow she's given the novice's veil and then dies at the age of 35 after well that was interesting stand by our camera just died <laughs> ah! Yeah, it is. Look at that. Like, that was right on cue. Anyway. So I think that's a really good place to end. Yep. Camera, camera died. Um, so YouTube video will be cut a little bit short. Yeah. I think we'll be able to fill it in with some audio. Just <clears throat> have pictures and pretty stuff. Yep. Um, I, I, 
it's one of the most visited sites in all of Holy Catholic Church, yep. the Holy Mother Church. Um, it, 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 there are, I believe, at the moment, 70 recorded miracles having been done at Lourdes. And in order for that to happen, there's a whole lot. So in order for you to do that, you actually have to go to the medical bureau, the Lord's Medical Bureau, mm -hmm. there with your documentation of your illness. They document everything, and then immediately following your visit to Lourdes, they follow up with you to yeah. make sure. Um, I just I, I I can't get over how beautiful this entire message of our mother is because the next one that we're going to go into is not so loving. No, there the the next one. There's a lot of doom and gloom, but again, it's all about our mother being an actual mother. She's she is loving and helping and and just supporting us as individuals. And that I mean, it's you can't get over the individual intimate nature of the revelation, the apparitions yep. that um, the the Virgin Mary makes to to Bernadette. She lives out her entire life in complete piety. Um, she is she's like the original most uncorrupted of the saints. Um, I, I just think it's beautiful. And I, yeah. I, I use there. It's, I could go on and on and on, which I don't want to, but uh, I think it's beautiful. And I think we should end there. Yeah. Visit us at www.catholicguardians.com. Catholic underscore guardians is our Instagram handle. Visit us on YouTube. Um, Catholic Guardians. Uh, follow us on Instagram again. Catholic underscore Guardians. Give us a follow. Give us a like. Um, be manly. It's our it's our masculine um, fraternal group that we have again on our website, which is CatholicGuardians.com. We have our online store. You can purchase any of the Catholic Guardians swag there, including the Memento Mori trademark. It's not trademarked, but I'm saying it is. I, I declare, declare it. Um. Let's end in prayer. Yep. And in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. In the name of the Father, Father the Son, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. God you bless can, you. Oh, I need to plug the podcast. Oh, you can, snap. You can... Uh, We're even talking on the podcast. You can find us on all major podcasting platforms, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, and Apple Podcast. And for the first time ever, we are soon going to be featured on Pandora. Really? So look forward to that. I don't know. It might take a couple of weeks, um, but look forward to us there. Yep. Uh, leave us a five-star review on uh, iTunes. Leave us a review. Uh, share this with your friends. Um, again, like this isn't the most popular concept and, and, and subject for the secular world. So we really do rely on you sharing our material with your friends. If you like what we have, um, please, please, we, we really, we beg you share it with your friends and your family. Um, the, the more you share it, the, the, the bigger we'll get and the more we'll be able to touch the hearts and souls of people around the world. Yep. God bless you. Pray the rosary daily. If pray you don't over, pray the rosary daily, you're wrong. You're wrong. Pray over your family, pray with your family, and pray for your family. And with that, God bless you. God bless. Have a good night. Have a good night.